Hey everybody, it's BC here, and welcome to another episode of Planet Nomads. Uh, so I did a little bit of work, I was trying to get this uh, daylight sensor working a little bit, and to be honest, I had a, a lot of trouble, um, as you saw from the clip in the beginning. Uh, the power seems to work a little funny, it's almost like things like the hover pads have like a capacitor, so if it's only giving 12%, eventually it's going to reach 100% inside the hover pad to give it enough to lift up and then drops off, and then goes again, and that's why you saw that I had extra solar panels, I was trying to see if I get a trigger at full power and disable a full power, but it doesn't quite work out that way. Uh, you know, possibly adjusting like the actual cutoff points might help. You know, it's a little tricky trying to get this set up. Uh, let's get the build vision back on. So as you can see, I originally tried up here, and that was wasn't working because it wasn't disconnecting. So I put it over to here, and it seems to work, but they still both sort of go on. But that uh, was a uh, worth a shot. It was an interesting one to try out. But so many different possibilities that you can do in this game. But for this episode, this is actually a build I've been planning on doing for a while and I haven't really thought about how I was going to do it or where I was going to do it, but I'm thinking why not, let's, let's put it right next, to, right next to the lab. And that's just because this is going to be something I'll be using for off-site projects and I'd like to be a, I'd like to have it actually running when I'm around. Now I did a little bit of work on the flyer here, as you can see by the conveyors and the conveyor connect or the Wi-Fi's, which we'll see in a second. And I didn't even notice that that they actually light up when you come within range. And I did that because I got this thing fully loaded with supplies, so I don't have to keep running back inside there to get the things I needed. But you know, if this is all that it reaches, it's not going to do me a lot of good. But anyways, uh, one of the things I've been wanting to do for a little while now is get like a, a, a constant supply of deuterium because if I'm going to be using generators, I want to be doing that. Uh, to get the supplies I, for today, as you can see by in here, I have one of these boxes. As you can see, I got a whole bunch of stuff made. I had, uh, we actually ran out of cobalt, which was surprising. So I went on a mining run and went back down to the south and back up to the north to get more gold, titanium, and xanite and all that stuff. And I filled this thing completely full of stuff. Uh, the miners weren't keeping their, the, the outputs, like keeping what was selected and not accounting for the time I was gone. So I had to camp out there and... Needless to say, I came back with 32 stacks of cobalt, and we're empty again. <laughs> surprise, surprise. But anyways, uh, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, start building something. I want to try to get something sort of in your face, but try to get sort of sci-fi, uh, maybe even be able to use it as a uh, main power source, because I plan on having at least eight large deuterium generators on this for decoration. But anyways, enough chit-chat, let's start building.
All right, so there we go. Uh, actually looked a lot bigger in my head than what it is here, but it's just as well because we're going to have some serious lag. I was actually starting to notice some conveyor lag just building this as I was... I don't know if you noticed when I was uh, finishing the miners, you might see a slight hiccup in the video. But anyways, this is what I have. I have a 12-pack of uh, water pumps. I have a 12-pack of food mach drink machines. I have a 4-pack of refineries and a 4-pack of deuterium generators and a large container to fill it all. And then I got the 9 miners back there for the carbon. So now to get this thing up and running, I do have everything everything connected. What I gotta do is I gotta put the I do have some uh, deuterium on me, so I gotta put that in there. That's gonna fire this thing up. Then I gotta go over there. I gotta set all the miners to only extract carbon, and I gotta do that before they fill up. And then I gotta go to the water pumps and, or turn them uh, set it to the so they only do carbon and they do they do not not export the container. Sorry, it's a bit of a long day for me. Uh, same with the water pumps too. Just make sure that it's not clogging up this container with the uh, dirty water and uh, whatever comes out of the miners. But hopefully that's just going to be carbon. And then uh, once that's all done, then I queue these up 999 times 4 of water. And I queue those up at 4 times deuterium at 999 each. And just let this thing run. So... Let us begin, and just like that, everything lights up. You gotta love it. And everything does have power. Good. So we take that to carbon. You use connect the container, turn that off, and then I gotta do that with all these. So I shall see you shortly. Okay, the food and drink machines are done. All that's left to do is just set up the refineries. We got twenty thousand water. And we will have that no time or drain this pond trying. Yeah, I don't know if you can actually drain the pond, but we're gonna find out. <laughs> if anyone's gonna do it, it's gonna be me. Because these pumps are gonna run non stop. And we should actually be seeing our first uranium, our deuterium showing up in the container here. So I had 45 when I put it in there, so. Has it crafted any yet? Has it? Oh, that's right. It's going to go in here first. So there we go. We have our deuterium generator. Or, uh, sorry, our hydroelectric refinery. And there we go. So it's going to be limitless power. It's going to be self sustaining. It is going to be generating a lot of power. We got. 64,000 watts. Let's actually go check the power output. Let's see how much we're using, see how much we're producing out of this thing. So we're using about 8,000. Each, each one is using about 995. So about 1,000 each. Times 8 is 8,000. Like so. And as you see, I try to put a beacon in there, sort of like a bit of a decorative purpose. But there we have it. Now we have an adequate power supply for any off-site builds we do because if I'm going to be using a lot of hover pads, I'm going to need a proper, reliable source. But anyways, uh, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, leave me a like, and I'll see you in the next one. Later.